and welcome again to A10 Heat and COVID. Still talking about Latin America. It just doesn't seem like uh, we're going to be done there. There's just so many different layers uh, to go through, whether it be Platt Amendment, Four Acre Act. Like an uh, onion. Just keep going. Just, I, I mean, there's a lot of use they can get out of it. Uh, Panama Canal that we just talked about in the previous lesson. Um, we're now also going to talk about how the United States, along with Roosevelt, is going to increase their involvement in Latin America. And when we do that, you know, let's start with this one. Uh, this one will probably be on a history region someday, I'm sure. Yeah, it's definitely kind of going to be. We've got Theodore Roosevelt here, the great TR, uh, dressed as, as what? Firefighter? You know, it's no. funny. Um, I, th I don't think students get this one. because They do. They, they, they do more. Unless than... you focus in on the badge. Yeah. You know, our constable. Our, our turn of the century police, police officer. officer, yes. You know, and there he is walking around with the baton. You know, and you would always see the cop twirling the baton, or, you know, kind of hitting it into his hand when he came with a bunch of unruly street gang. Absolutely. Um, and again, size. He's looming over everyone else in this particular picture. Standing on a map, we've got Europe over here, United States over here. The rest of the world, really, over yep. here, because we do have India, we do have yep. China in the background, but down here, Latin America. And, you know, he's stepping in because it looks like Europe is trying to make their way into this equation. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, if we go back to seventh grade history again, you know, European countries have been colonizing the Americas since the 1500s. Since you're bringing up seventh grade, you know, history, I mean, one of the things that Washington said this farewell address is, hey, stay out of that drama uh, over there. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. And yet another seventh grade history. Oh, here we thing go. that we learned in seventh grade is one of the successors of Washington's presidency, James Monroe, when he takes power. You know, he's looking at what's going on in the world and he's gonna, be, he's gonna throw up the stop sign. Yeah. You know, if he's coaching third base, you know, and there's that base hit, and he's like, no, you're sure. He's like, no, Europe, we're gonna put your hands up here. You know, because basically, it was really a, a, a small line in his speech. Yep. You know, he's giving his State of the Union address. I think it's one sentence where he basically says, and I'm not paraphrasing here because I don't remember the exact line of, of James Monroe's State of the Union address from 1820. Well, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. 1823. Yeah. Doing you this. know, he basically says, um, <clears throat> the Americas are forever closed to European colonization. Small little line but it really becomes James Monroe's legacy of what's known as the Monroe Doctrine. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, how Theodore Roosevelt looks to the past, because mm -hmm. he was really a student of history. Mm -hmm. You know, in a previous lesson, we may have mentioned that, you know, the Sherman Antitrust Act, you know, 1896, I want to say, it, it's, it's put out there, but nobody really enforced it or used it until you get to Theodore yeah. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Now you have an obscure line in a Monroe Doc and James Monroe's inauguration speech that Theodore Roosevelt thinks back to and is like, hey, I'm going to take this and use yep. this. I mean, it just. That so legal basically, mind, what, yeah. what Monroe had meant at the time yeah. was European countries can no longer colonize the Americas. If you already have a colony here, fine. Well, after our own independence and France's revolution, we start to see many Latin American and Central American revolutions. Yeah. So European influence and European power in Latin and Central America, South America, has diminished. And turn of the 20th century, some of these countries are going to try to reassert themselves into Latin America. Why not? Smaller countries, you know, uh, plenty of resources. Plenty of resources, governments, you know, not always as stable as in comparison. What we refer to as banana republics. Yep, absolutely. Um, so in this political cartoon, here you have, you know, that fire or drama that Washington was referring to in his farewell address right over there. Um, even though it was a small line in his speech, you know, th that small line is a big uh, wall or barrier. It becomes the protective shield absolutely. of the Western Hemisphere. Don't come over here. Yep. Um, that's pretty much essentially what he's saying. Now... Kind of switch it up a little bit you know so again we got the monroe doctrine right over here you guys stay in your hood neighborhood your half of the earth we've we'll got our us. half of the earth so so far that's all it is you stay there we stay here theodore roosevelt gets his hands on this now you know you, this foreign policy statement that monroe comes up with it's just a warning just a warning 
stay out of the Western Hemisphere, stay out of our need. He's gonna add to this. It's almost like, however, but. If you show up. How, uh, yeah, no. if you do, and this is what winds up inspiring this, because you had European countries that were sent warships to Venezuela, because Venezuela uh, had to pay off some sort of debt, so had to pay off some of their debts. So now right away, you're, you're going, all right, well, wait a minute, we have European countries coming over here, clearly they're not allowed to, and now, this is one of these things where you're staring somebody in the face and you wait and see who blinks first. And it but, was it going to be Roosevelt. But the Monroe Doctrine was from like the 1820s. Right. This is like the early 1900s. Who really cares about some right. like dead president? Yeah, that's really what you're getting yeah. at. Yeah. Um, the United States doesn't want these European countries and Latin American countries. Um, we want to have all the power or influence there. We have, you, we have lots of interest as well. So Roosevelt says that, hey, if you come over here, we now have the right to intervene and preserve law and order down there. It's his little corollary. Yep, his Roosevelt. little addition. Cor 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 corollary yep. to the Monroe Doctrine, saying, I will, we will, America will protect these nations from you because basically we're the big brother right. of the entire Western Hemisphere. North America, South America, it's ours. Yep. And we will protect their interests, which were really our interests, right? We're not <laughs> right, right. We'll protect them to keep you on your half of the earth. It's it's really clever. Again, you know, Theodore Roosevelt finding finding almost like a loophole or a way to get involved or to justify um, our involvement. And everyone knows by this time the world power that we've become. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's a reason why when we got up to World War One. You know, certain countries didn't want us involved in the war. And this whole idea of us being the, the police officer of the world, you, you can almost say it starts right around here at this point, yeah. you know, and, and when we look at that. Uh, Which gives us to, you know, um, uh, where, hold on, gives us to like Roosevelt's greatest quote, speak softly. And carry a big but stick. But carry a big stick. And this is what he's referring to here. This this cartoon goes mm -hmm. along with that, that, uh, that African proverb and that big stick, the new diplomacy. Anything else we want to add with this? And my, my old students from last year will laugh because of my, my, my slip last time when I said um, big stick diplomacy. Yeah. And they all laughed. Um, but no, it, it's, it's basically the big stick diplomacy. Speak softly, carry a big stick is what we were known for yep. since Roosevelt. That, look, everyone knows how strong we are. Yep. We don't have to be that guy beating our chest, ripping our shirt off, getting ready to get in a fight, looking at my muscles. Right. That Roosevelt could just walk into a room and everyone's like, all right. That's it. I mean, here it is. Yeah. That's it. Do you really do you really want to play that card against us? Love it. It's like, Speak softly. Carry a big stick. Carry a big yep. stick. Great. Thank you for watching.